So I'm going to discuss a little bit about uh, UX today. Um, we're going to question the idea of what UX actually is um, and talk about some stuff around contextual data and how we can get that from a graph and some other places. So, oh, let's switch. so for those of you that don't know me, I'm Lewis. I'm a BizApps MVP. Um, I yet left sixth form or high school about a year ago. I work in a partner called ANS Group. Um, I'm the author of a blog called Low Code Lewis, where this year I'm trying to do 365 posts in 365 days. Um, and yeah, there's a bunch more stuff on that slide uh, that you can take a look at. So yeah, today we're going to take a little look at what user experience is. We're going to take a look at what contextual data is, some real life consumer examples of contextual data, um, sort of the stuff that you might see on your phone um, or that you use on a daily basis, some of the new stuff coming out from vendors. Um, we'll take a look at some low code examples that I've built. Um, then we'll take a look at using Microsoft Graph to surface context in Power Platform solutions, and I'll give you some takeaway tips, and I promise to do it all in the time that I've got. So the user experience bit I want to talk about first. Now, the thing that I want to get away from and that I think sometimes we confuse a little bit is the fact that sometimes we sort of say or think of user experience as just GUI um, or a graphical user interface. Now, that isn't the case, and first of all, it's not user experience isn't just a graphical user interface, it's not even just a user interface. And there is a difference between those two things as well. So graphical user interfaces is the typical sort of the screen that we might see in, a, in an app or in a dashboard, something like that, that we can interact with um, using a mouse or keyboard, you know, tabbing through that kind of stuff. A user interface is the different ways that we might inter interact with that. It might not actually be that we can visibly see um, that interface. It might be a different way that we interact with a solution. But user experience is a lot wider than this, and it's you know a combination of loads of different things with GUI or UI just being one part of it. You know, we might think of stuff like if you receive like um, a tech product in the mail, um, the experience of opening that product, and that's part of the user experience end to end of having that uh, product or that solution. And so it isn't just you know sort of. Um, visible interfaces that we see. And that's what I think we need to start to think a little bit differently about with user experience. And one of the things that we can sort of think about um, as a factor of user experience is how we use data in our solutions. Now, what I'd like to talk about is contextual data. So, and I'm not gonna talk about this in terms of it being a type of data that we can use, but more how we use the data that we have around us and that sits within our platforms. So I'm sort of thinking of this as the data that we surface in solutions in alternative ways to just listing rows from a table. Um, so less the kind of thing of just opening a page in Dynamics and seeing a bunch of cases or accounts. And it's more the way that we use data to suggest sort of insights, give um, quick tips in applications, or just speed up processes um, with different sort of ways of delivering impact. So to give you a few examples of different types of data that we could use contextually, um, so I've got three categories that I've thought of um, had a think about here. And the first one being out the window context. So this is sort of data that sits wider than the digital ecosystem that we work in. And it's stuff about the weather, perhaps. It's traffic and public transport status. It's information about the current economy status and market data, or perhaps just stuff from the news. Um, and then we might start to think about stuff that's a little bit closer to us, so within our digital ecosystem. And that's stuff like subconsciously created productivity data, and that's some of the stuff that we'll talk about with Microsoft Graph in a minute. It's the stuff like the calendar entries we make, the Teams messages that we send, all of that kind of stuff. Um, then we've got stuff like customer data, business commercial data, such as pricing of solutions and products. We've got device information, such as you know the different Windows devices that we use that we could access through Graph via Intune. Um, and then we've got a third category being operational context. That's stuff like um, our employees' availability, their skill sets, um, whether our different sites um, that we use at our company are accessible, have they got accessible entrances, have they got surveillance running, that kind of stuff. Um, different processes that we use in our organization, you know, um, stuff like how our resources are booked and all of that kind of stuff. Now, this is a bunch of different data that we could, that we might use sort of in our business, um, in our companies, wider than our organizations, just with the general public, stuff like weather, all of that kind of stuff. But we can use it inside of our solutions to deliver impact um, by using this data contextually. So if I give you a few examples, 
And one of the ones that we've been hearing about loads and loads recently is Copilot in Microsoft 365. Now, Copilot takes advantage of contextual data by pulling stuff all over from the Microsoft Cloud ecosystem. And this is kind of taking that data that sits within the digital ecosystem. It's not quite as broad as perhaps the out the window context and thinking about um, the current market status, you know, the news, that kind of stuff. But it takes stuff like in Outlook, in Teams, it takes the messages that we've sent, the emails that we've sent, the documents that we've created, the stuff in Dynamics 365 about an account, and it pulls it pulls all of that data together um, on the current thing that we're doing to suggest insights um, and sort of make the things that we do sped up um, and deliver some more impact. Now, another example that might resonate with you a little bit more is Siri suggestions. If any of you have an iPhone in your pocket, stuff like getting into the car and starting driving. I know my iPhone always tells me that it's on do not disturb because I'm driving. That's using that contextual data of me driving um, to silence anything that's coming in on my iPhone. Um, anything like the apps that I commonly use, I might get suggestions to open them at a specific time of day where I've previously used that app um, in that time of day. It might be that I've just gotten in the car and at that time of day commonly I go to a specific location and my iPhone will tell me um, his directions to this place. You might want to take this route to avoid some traffic and that's using that content textual data again um, to sort of speed up the things that we do and deliver better impact. Now, there is a low-code example that I want to share with you in a moment, and that's the caller clinician solution that I developed and released to the community on my blog, lowcodelewis.com. Um, and now the problem here that we that I looked at with some people um, in healthcare was the need to sort of get hold of clinicians where and there isn't, you know, loads of available resource on a ward or in a hospital in a specific location and we need some more support from a clinician that might be further away. And now the problem that we had when thinking about the traditional process around this is the kind of thing where okay so first I need to figure out who in Outlook um, I can use that has a relevant job title that might mean that they have the skills that I need. Then I need to open up their calendar which is an additional task I need to check their availability then I need to open up an additional application, which might be Teams or Slack or whatever I use to communicate. Um, and I need to message that person to get them to come to me. So I've wasted, you know, maybe five minutes just every time I need to get additional help from a clinician in a healthcare scenario where really I could have just clicked three different buttons in an app that uses contextual data um, to get those sort of processes automated. And that's what I've done with this solution. So this solution uses Microsoft Graph and context from the digital ecosystem um, to return information on clinicians' availability um, based on their uh, calendar availability and presence in Microsoft Teams. So I'll take a, I'll show you that in a moment. Um, but before we do that, let's take a little closer look at Graph. So Microsoft Graph is basically a platform that we can use um, with an API um, that lets us get hold of contextual or lets us get hold of data that we can use contextually from our digital ecosystem being the Microsoft Cloud. So we can get hold of things like Microsoft Teams messages, we could get hold of device information, um, stuff about our coworkers, um, different insights and all sorts that we can use to just deliver impact with our solutions. So there is one thing that I wanna talk about before we sort of dive into a bit of a demo, and that's about how you might wanna use Microsoft Graph in your environment. And I, I've picked this slide out and it is a bit more technical, but I think it's quite important. Now, one of the easiest ways to just get to grips with using Graph in your internet is to, hey, knock up an app registration, assign some application permissions. That means that you get access to whatever data you need. Use a simple HTTP step in a Power Automate flow. Um, plug in the different bits of information that you need to interact with that form of authentication to Azure. Um, and then you get your data back. But that's a little bit risky and it gives us a bit too much access to information sometimes. Now, there's two different types of permissions that we can use when accessing information from Azure AD secured APIs, Graph being one of those. Now, we've got delegated permissions and application permissions. Delegated basically requires two things. It requires the application and the user's context. An application permission just requires the application to be running by itself. It doesn't require a signed in user to be present. Now, the problem with that is it means that when we're using application permission, there isn't a check against the user to see what they've got access to. It means I literally get access to all of the objects for the permission that I have in my tenant. Now, that means that if I have an application permission to see people's calendar information, I can suddenly see everyone's calendar information in the organization if that's been approved. 
Um, and that means that I might be able to jump on a team's call that my CEO's on, which isn't probably the right idea. So that's when we're going to stick with delegated permissions, which we're only able to use if resources can have permission scope to a single user. But for what we need to do um, in this case, that's going to be possible in the majority of cases. So if I just jump across into a bit of a demo, I'm going to show you a solution that I've built. Now, the first thing I'm actually going to mention is the Microsoft Graph Explorer. Now, you can use Microsoft Graph Explorer to basically test out different requests that you can get and um, that you can use with Microsoft Graph. There's a bunch of different sample queries and all of the resources that you can access with Graph in this tab over here. Um, now, Microsoft Graph works with a bunch of different types of tenants. So you can work with your typical enterprise and business tenants. You can also work in um, education environments to get hold of sort of information like assignments from Microsoft Teams for Education. Uh, so it does work across those different platforms. Now, yeah, definitely take a look at Graph Explorer and you're able to sort of run queries and get sample data back. You can even sign in with your user's context to interact with the data in your tenant. Um, and if you click on this sort of icon here, you can read the documentation um, from the request URL that you've added in there. Now, I'm going to jump into the Azure portal here. And I thought I was on the right screen over here, but let me just navigate to what I need. So basically, I've got an app registration set up in my Azure AD tenant, um, and that's got a single permission um, assigned against it for my caller clinician solution. Or it's got two permissions, actually, because one is by default. One is the user.read permission for Microsoft Graph. That's always added to app registrations as default. Then I've got the presence.read.all delegated permission, which means I'm going to be able to access any of the presence information for all of the users in my organization, which I, as a user, am already able to access because that's you know something I could hop into Teams and just search up a user and see their presence information for. Now, I've got one more thing sort of set up on here, which is a redirect URI. This is basically um, what's going to let me work with the context of my user when I create a custom connector in Power Platform. When I create a connection for that customer custom connector for the first time, I'm going to have to accept that I'm giving um, yeah access to those permissions, and this is the bit that makes that work. I've also then got a client secret set up that I've then got stored in an Azure Key Vault. Um, that's one of the things I'm going to reference on the Power Platform side. So let's jump into that and have a quick look at the solution that I've got here. The first thing that I've got is a bunch of environment variables. Now, this is all the stuff that I need to use to control authentication when I'm making my requests to Microsoft Graph. So I've got stuff like my resource URL, um, the authentication stuff like my secret tenant ID and client ID. Um, now, if I look at my secret, I'm not actually going to jump into any, any of these, but this is referencing an Azure Key Vault. Um, it is possible to use a text um, environment variable, but I'd always recommend using Azure Key Vault as and when you can. Um, to properly secure your secrets. Now, the next thing that I've got in my solution is a custom connector to get my presence information from Microsoft Graph whilst being able to use my delegated permissions, which I can't just do with a HTTP step. So here I'm basically just got, a, I have a single action to get my presence information. I have a bit of a defined response um, that gives me my availability and that kind of stuff. Now what I've got is a couple of dataverse tables where I'm basically matching clinicians to um, users, um, sorry, clinicians to skills. So let's take a look at this blood test. I've got a bunch of different clinicians that can do this skill. And then finally, I've got a Canvas app where I'm going to select the current location I'm in within a hospital. I'm going to just select the skill that I need. And then I'm going to have uh, clinicians returned, which also shows me their availability um, for you know, what their, their availability at that current time, then I can simply just click this Teams button. That's going to send a notification to them and it's going to have them come and help me with what I need. Now that saves those five minutes of having to, having to go between those different platforms where really I can just be using contextual data to speed up those processes. So if I just leave you on a few sort of um, takeaway points, So I definitely say, remember that user experience isn't the same as just a graphical user interface. It's not even the same as a user interface. Um, don't just use context from the platform. Think wider. Think of that out the window context, the stuff in the market, um, the news, um, weather information, all of that kind of stuff. Compare and take inspiration from leading consumer market products like Microsoft Copilots or Siri Suggestions. Those are the, those are the sort of examples that use contextual data in really effective ways. Check out the Microsoft Graph Explorer. 
and always be careful when it comes to assigning permissions to an app registration for Microsoft Graph. Um, remember to always have the lowest permission level possible to achieve the requirement and delegated where possible first. And on that note, I will hand back over to you, David. Thank you.